All right, diving right into online censorship today. And wow, um, this one is a big one. I mean, we're talking about a tech CEO making a statement with uh, with some serious actions behind it. Yeah, it's really a perfect example of how these events, um, you know, real world events are forcing these showdowns between governments and tech companies. It's like that question of who gets to decide what you see online. Well, it's not hypothetical anymore. Not at all. So the article you sent over, the one from Plator Network, Chris Pavlovsky, Enfrenta Amenazas de Censura en Europa, that's the heart of this deep dive. Right. And it's in Spanish, but don't worry, we'll translate. Of course. Now, uh, at the center of it all is Chris Pavlovsky. He's the CEO of Rumble. Oh, I know Rumble, yeah. So for anyone who's not familiar, Rumble is that video platform, kind of like a, some might say, a feisty alternative to YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's attracting a lot of users who feel like, you know, they're being censored elsewhere, that their freedom of speech is being limited on other platforms. Exactly. And Pavlovsky himself, he's really built a reputation, hasn't he? As someone who, well, he's not afraid to speak his mind. Yeah, he's known for being very outspoken, especially when it comes to free speech in the digital age. A real advocate for it. To say the least. Okay, so the article starts off with this whole incident with Pavel Dorov. Right. And he's the founder of Telegram. Which Telegram is important here. It's that, yeah. you know, that really secure messaging app, mm -hmm. people who are all about privacy, they love Telegram. The encryption. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Strong encryption and all that. So it's interesting because, well, Durov was recently detained. By French authorities at oh. a Paris airport. Yeah. And the article, it doesn't it doesn't get into all the details yeah. about why, but it does mention, you know, authorities expressing concern over content moderation on the platform. Interesting. So basically, platforms deciding what users can and can't post, and now governments are like, hold on, we have something to say about this. It's becoming a real point of tension. And here's where Pavlovsky comes in, and uh, let's just say he does not hold back. Yeah, strong reaction. He sees this whole Durov situation as a major red flag. It's a direct attack on free speech, at least that's how he sees it, and a warning to platforms like Rumble. I think what's really significant here is that it's not just, you know, I disagree with this policy. It's this sense of this is a sign of things to come. You know, He's a slippery slope. Exactly. Like, where does it stop? And he is so concerned that he is actually taking Rumble out of Europe completely. And we're not just talking about business operations. The article says he is personally relocating. Wow. Which, I mean, you're right. That's not just a business decision at that point. Uh -huh. There's a deep personal conviction there. He's putting his money where his mouth is, so to speak. Absolutely. So we have this clash, this head-on collision between, on one side, governments wanting, needing to have more control over what happens online. Right. And then you have leaders like Pavlovsky saying, whoa, 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 hold up. Who gets to decide what we can say online? And that's the core issue, isn't it? I mean, finding that balance, protecting people from actual harmful content, but not silencing different opinions in the process. And how does that affect, you know, the average person who just wants to enjoy the Internet? That's the big question. Right. Yeah, because nobody wants to, like, log in and suddenly it's, I don't know, super restricted, right? Like, you can only access certain things based on where you live. And that's what's scary about this idea of, um, what was it, fragmentation of the Internet, like the article talked about. Yeah. Instead of this one big global online community, we end up with these almost like digital countries or something, each with their own set of rules. So what I can see online, who I can talk to... It all depends on my physical location. In a way, yeah. And while that might seem kind of abstract, think about it like, okay, what if like cat videos could only go viral in certain countries? Wait, what? Right. It sounds silly, but it gets the point across. Okay, yeah. What happens to the free flow of information? Global collaboration. Yeah. Even just being exposed to different points of view. It's not just funny videos anymore. It's about like... Our whole understanding of the world it limits you exactly and yeah. especially for someone like you who's really you know you like to stay informed you seek out information that kind of fragmentation would be i imagine really frustrating oh for sure it'd be like all of a sudden the amount of stuff i have access to just shrinks and then the question becomes well who's controlling what gets in right if platforms are constantly worried about breaking some law in some country they're going to play it safe even if it means taking down stuff that's totally harmless so to avoid stepping on anyone's toes, they just make the internet really, I don't know, bland. And more than just bland, 
it becomes less representative. Mm -hmm. You lose that diversity of thought, that range of human experience. And this is where things get even more complicated. Right. Because the article, it brings up this concept of digital rights. Yeah, I saw that. Like, just like we have rights offline, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the idea is that we should have those same rights in the digital world, too. The right to express yourself freely online, to access information. But, well, Obviously, it's proving hard to define exactly what those rights look like in practice. And who gets to decide. Exactly. Yeah. And this whole thing with Pavlovsky and Rumble, this could be like the first of many legal battles over this. Oh, yeah. It brings up so many questions like who determines what crosses the line into harmful online? What happens when my definition of free speech clashes with yours? These are the kinds of issues that honestly courts are going to be figuring out for years to come. And there's no simple answer either. Right. Like, we all agree that dangerous content, truly harmful stuff, it shouldn't be spreading freely. But where's that line? And who draws it? It's such a delicate balance. Definitely not easy. So we've got governments involved, tech leaders pushing back, legal questions. I mean, this is complicated stuff. It's not just a tech issue anymore, is it? It's really not. It's about how we communicate, how we connect with each other, how we see the world. And finding a way forward, well, it's going to take a lot more than just, you know, angry tweets and quick fixes. What we need are real conversations, you know, thoughtful ones. Because this impacts everyone, right? right? Not just the people making the decisions at the top. It really does feel like, I don't know, something that impacts all of us. And speaking of impact, that line in the article about the, what was it, the fight for a truly free Internet? Yeah. It really stuck with me. I mean, what does that even mean at this point? A truly free Internet. It's a good question, right? And I think it's more relevant now than ever. I mean, is that even possible with so many different opinions on what should be allowed online, what's harmful? And even if it is possible, I mean, what are we even willing to do to make it happen? It feels so big. It's easy to feel powerless, right? Like we're just along for the ride while governments and tech companies battle it out. Totally. So what can we actually do as like regular people using the internet? What difference can we even make? Well, I think the first step honestly, and you're already doing it, is staying informed. Like actually understanding these issues, the different sides, what's at stake. So not just skimming headlines. No, like really digging in, reading articles, maybe even doing your own research so you can form your own opinion. Okay, so step one, stay informed. Exactly. And then I'd say, you know, talking about it, having real conversations about this stuff, and not just with people who agree with you. Oh, I know that feeling. Right. Like, challenge yourself to understand different perspectives, even if you don't agree with them. That's how you actually learn something. Exactly. And then, you know, if you really want to make a difference, there are organizations out there fighting for digital rights, for a more open Internet. So finding groups that, like, match your values and supporting them. Yeah. yeah. Because all of it, even the small things... They add up. It all makes a difference. It does. Because the future of the Internet, it's not set in stone. Mm -hmm. What we do, the choices we make, they shape where things go from here. So it's less about feeling powerless and more about like, OK, what role do I want to play in all of this? <laughs> exactly. It's a lot to think about. And on that note, that's it for our deep dive today. But keep those questions coming. Keep those conversations going, because like we've been talking about, it matters. Until next time. Very